welcome to October, guys, and a very drizzly one at that. This week, we are going to be exploring Shaw, what it's like to live in such a unique and remote place, and also dipping into a little bit of island culture. Um, so, you're just going to be popping around the island with me kind of all week, and we'll just see how it goes. So, climb aboard. For those of you that don't know, I live on a teeny island in the very northwest corner of Washington. Um, and I share this island with about 250 other residents. So it's definitely a fair question to ask. If Shaw is so quiet during the winter time, what is there to do? So let's go see. drone a tree which they pretty much only grow on the west coast at least in the states and they have this weird flaky red bark you drop, drop like funky little berries and they have super hard wood so if one falls and you're able to use it for firewood then you're in luck but none of us ever want to cut down madronas just because they're so pretty and we all really love them. They're very much of a Pacific Northwest symbol. Now, if you're going to come to Shaw, you're going to need to know some road etiquette. If you want to look like a true Islander, you wave. You always wave. Oh look, here's a car now. You wave, just like that. And oh, I actually know them. Also, if you live on the island long enough, you will know just about everybody that you pass. No trespassing is a for real thing around here. If you see a no trespassing sign, that means don't go unless you're invited. Another fun fact about Shaw is there are no restaurants, no cafes, no bistros, no coffee shops, no way to get quick food. Also, no bars, which is actually kind of nice. Um, so, if you're going to eat, you must make it yourself. Most of the year on Shaw, there's no fresh grocery option. Um, having a garden is pretty important, so there's lots of gardening. And having a good handle on winter crops is also important, because you might have to go a long while without anything fresh if you're not planning on going into town. So I'm out here to get some carrots for dinner. my sunflower over before it could bloom. I worked so hard to get this thing to grow. <sighs> I guess the garden said no this year. So another fun fact about Shaw is that the 
kids that are raised here often have a hard time fitting into mainland culture because we've been raised with a bunch of retired people as our peers. So we are more comfortable with elderly people and foreigners. We also have a strong pull towards travel. Pretty much any time that I meet up with um, kids that come, that have left the island and then come back, you can always ask them, so what new place did you go to this year? And they'll say, the Galapagos, I, the Galapagos Portugal, Miami. Ecuador. Some, I know a couple of them are over in England and Spain right now. Honduras. It's just very much a normal thing that once you leave Shaw, you hit 18 and leave Shaw, then you go and travel all over. So Levi, being a true island yeah. kid, has done quite a bit of globe trotting. What are the countries that you've been to? I've been to, let's see if I can do it in order-ish, the Czech Republic, um, all four countries in the United Kingdom, uh, plus the Republic of Ireland, um, Canada, um, Mexico, and oh Costa Rica and uh, France, Spain, Andorra. Japan. Oh Japan, how could Japan. I that's like, you know, in the blood, so we don't think about in that. There, yes. Um I think that's the list in uh And soon to be in a couple Fiji. of weeks. Yeah. Several, yes. several weeks. Popping over there. So. Apparently. Okay, check it out. One, two, three, four. This is the one and only four way stop on Shaw. And sometimes you'll meet one other person. Only once have I heard third party that there were four people at the four way all at the same time. Exciting, really. And while we're standing in the main intersection of Shaw, I might as well show you. Over here is the Shaw Island Library and Historical Society. That, wait, wait, yeah, that, the, that one, that one, right there. Mm, that's our library. It's so cute and little. It is also the only privately owned library in the state. And we've got it right here at our intersection. Isn't that exciting? It's just it's so cute. And then there's a little teeny, teeny, teeny museum that has Shaw Island history. If you're interested, um, it's here. Shaw Island also has its own monastery which was an integral part to my childhood, even though I'm not Catholic. Dad worked there and we spent tons of time at the, at the monastery and with the nuns. This right here, that building is our community center. And, it, and yeah, it's just, it's just about as big as what you would imagine it to be. And if an event is going to happen on Shaw, it's going to happen there. So now this is the central hub of Shaw. And it's, you know, hopping tonight. First of all, we have our general store, which is closed between now and next May, like end of May. So don't plan on groceries at all. We also have our post office and oh my goodness, it's so cute. Let's go see. The post office is also closed. It's only open for like three or four hours a day or something. They almost shut this post office down and the islanders like threw a fit and fell in because we refused to have to go to another island to get our mail and send letters. Um, so they're just these cute old boxes. That one's ours. And um, 
it's teeny in here. If you put three adults in here, then it's too much. And you're like bumping around people with your packages. And, and then if you see somebody they haven't seen in a while, then you're like, oh my goodness, hi. And so then you're trying to talk. And then sometimes somebody will like stand outside the door while you're inside and you're talking and you're trying to send a package and you're, it's ridiculous. But the real reason why this is the central hub of Shaw, I'll show you. Come, come with me. This is the ferry landing. This is our portal to the outside world. If anyone wants to come to this island or leave this island, you gotta do it through that right there. When a ferry arrives and when they have room on the ferry to take you, which in the summertime can be tricky. I think some things that really need to be recognized about living on an island or really any really rural area it's incredibly quiet and you need to be comfortable being alone a lot and i think a lot of people are drawn to the island because of that and then i think a lot of people are pushed away from the island because of that and i know for me it took a lot of years to figure out how to be an extrovert in such a secluded area and um, and to learn to love the silence and, and what to do with it um, and I think it gives a beautiful opportunity for not only a deeper um, fellowship with the Lord that maybe noise would drown out but also um, a, it, it kind of creates a clear space for creating, imagining, building on Shaw. If you want something, you have to create it yourself because it's just not here. Um, and, and I think for me, the surrounding of Shaw has very much encouraged creativity because I found as a teenager, oftentimes my brain was just bored and I didn't know what to do with it. So you kind of figure out to make friends with the silence.